Princess Casserole here and I am here with a, another video. This will be my Bakelite collection and I love Bakelite. I am going to use the term Bakelite today like the term Kleenex. So even though some of these won't be made by the Bakelite Corporation, which um, I can't remember his name, <laughs> Leland Bakeland or something like that. He is the one who developed the Bakelite plastic that um, started the, I think, Bake Bakeland Corporation. I, I apologize, I didn't do um, the research that I should have. It's all in my head, but it doesn't come out my mouth very well. So you can read up a lot about that. Um, there are a lot of people that know a lot more about Bakelite and vintage plastics than I do. I am just a connoisseur. This is my collection and I very much love it and I wanted to share it with you guys. We will go over the ways of testing Bakelite in this video too. There are a few ways and I will go over them with you and just kind of look at my collection. So again, I know there's a lot of people out there that know a lot like a ton about Bakelite. So if you guys want to leave comments below and correct anything that I say or expand on it and add some more information, I'd very much appreciate it. I just kind of started collecting these within the last year. So these are um, the things that I've learned over the past year. And I know there is a lot more to learn and I'm excited to do so. So I did not separate these. <laughs> um, let's see. I will start with these. I got these from a local thrift store and the lady that uh, works at that thrift store really knows a lot about vintage jewelry. So she oh, always knows her Bakelite. And since it was 1999, I figured that that's what this was and that's why she had it up so high and I don't have any any red Bakelite and I really wanted some so this was my first and I'm excited to have it because I love red Bakelite so there was a red and then there's two one that's greener and one that's that's kind of green and the the plain red bangle I think I have my 20% off that I used as well so at least I got a little bit of a discount but I did test all three of these and they did test positively for Bakelite so I was excited about that. Uh, this is the one that I found with you guys when I was unbagging one of my jewelry bags from one of the uh, thrift stores and this is a cool brown color. I think they call this Mississippi Mud. There are colors that, uh, terms for colors usually have something to do with food. And so they're not like, you know, if you call it something else, they're not going to yell at you for it because it's not like a trade name or anything like that. But this one I believe is called Mississippi Mud. It's a beautiful cappuccino-y type color. And I love this one. And we got to discover that one together, which is nice. This one is like creamed spinach, I believe they call it. And it's yellow, creamy, green color. And I love this one. It's, it's plain, there's no carvings or anything. So these plain ones are not worth as much as ones that are carved, but they're nice stacking bracelets to add, add together. So I do very much enjoy those. This one is, I believe, hand carved, and you can see there are carved marks in here. They're not completely perfect or uni uniform, and it's pretty deeply carved. So I do think this one is an older carved Bakelite bangle. Um, so you can see the chip marks in there. So I really like this one. It's like a a brownie type color and these ones look really nice together super fall and I really like those this one is pretty big 
I don't remember the name of this yellowy greenish one, what they call it. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> They're all like food names though. Um, so I don't remember. But this one is like a yellowy brown again. And it is just kind of kind of a bigger chunky one. So this one's fun because they don't look like the normal bake light that you would see. But they're they're big, they're heavy. This one's pretty heavy. And it did test positively with the semi-chrome test. I can't remember if it did with the um, hot water test or not. That, and that's why you have to do all three, because sometimes they can test positively with one and they won't test positively, positively with another. <laughs> this one is one of my favorites. I, I just love the color of this one. So it's almost tortoise shelly, but not quite. It's brown and ambery in color. It's just super gorgeous and it's a nice size. And I just, I love this one so much and I just had the feeling that this one would be big light. Well, if you look inside here, sometimes um, I've heard other people say that you'll see like an orange peel texture inside. Yeah, and this one kind of has that. So if you look in the light, it's kind of like a, an orange peely type texture on the inside. And then the outside to me feels like a jelly candy. So like a dot, you know, um, one of those dots. That's what it looks like to me. It's really juicy. It's probably a weird way to explain it, but that's, <laughs> that's what it, what it feels like to me. This one, um, I paid up for, it was at another sort of store where the lady knew what she had, that it was Bakelite, but I really, like it was still reasonable and um, it's a place where you can have coupons and things. So I had to get this one and I love it. So I love the color of it and the shape. It's octagonal and it is just so beautiful. I love this one and this one kind of together. And I just, I love this. And the color, it's got some yellow to it. So it's super cool. Some of these you'll see, they call them end of day bake light, which <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't have any end of day bake light. I did not know what that meant. <laughs> when I first heard the term, I kind of thought that it meant like something what's that word uh draconian not draconian like um what's that word where like the hunger games and stuff is i don't remember but you know some like end of day like bird box kind of <laughs> term and i was like i had no idea what it meant but it was just like at the end of the day of the work day Sometimes they would mix all the, the bake light together and make the bangles out of them so they would have multiple colors. I don't know why I thought that, <laughs> but that's that's what came into my mind was like, uh, you know, dystopian. That's what it is, the dystopian kind of thing. So, I don't know. I'm weird. This one also tested positively for bake light. It looks a little bit different. It looks more like a resin to me. Um, I can't remember again with the hot water test with that one either. I just put everything kind of together. So I think it is, it's a cool um, green and yellow color, which again, you kind of have to know the colors that Bakelite comes into. That'll also help you figure out if something is Bakelite or not before you buy it. Cause you know what colors it generally comes in and which ones it does not. This one I found in the wild and I love it. It is super deeply carved. And a lot of the, what, what they call fake light, which are the newer phenolic resins that they pass off as um, vintage sometimes will not be this deeply carved. And 
So that's how I love this one. It is a really ambery color, so it goes really well with these three. So this is one of my favorite. I love the color. It's super cool. Um, and this is one of my favorite pieces. Looks really nice with this one too. So that's the fun part about Bakelite too. They make for really great stacks and like kind of mixing and, and matching them and just having a really big stack and being creative with what you have. So that's kind of what I like about it as well. Um, this one I got on eBay and it was not cheap, but it matches something else I will show you and I just love it. It's got like a black stretch and it oxidized into this really cool orangey color and it's just super chunky and super awesome. Bakelite oxidizes and that's how it changes color so this wouldn't have originally looked this color. If you can see these two down here they must have been exposed to the sun and air actually like the three of these a little bit differently than the other ones because the coloring is different it's got a lot darker here than some of the other ones and that's why it tests positively with the semi-chrome test is the it picks up on the oxidation where other plastics don't oxidize like that so I love this piece. Paid up for it. Um, I have this one too. You'll find a lot of them that kind of look faux tortoise and faceted. So I just, I love this one. I love them all. Let's get real. This one I got in an antique store. It is four-sided so it's not octagonal but it's got this really cool like lucidy moon glow laminated with it and I just I love this one I think it's super cool it is just really fun and again this one has that that juicy type texture to it and it's super fun the ones now because Bakelite it's not as worth as much as it used to be, but the fun pieces and the carved pieces are the ones that you still want to go for if you see them for a reasonably pri reasonable price. This is another favorite. These are black faceted. They're Art Deco, so they're older. Again, I believe, <laughs> from what I've researched, these are... Um, what I'm saying again if you have any other information because I know there's people that this is what they do they do just phenolic resins just plastics just bake light so I know there's a lot of a lot more information out there than I have but there were three of these and they were together and I love these I got a really decent deal on them because people didn't know what they had I knew and I love it so, my blacks, my black bangles. Another one is this one, and it is um, hand made of genuine marblette. So marblette was a company that made phenolic resin, um, but they also made other plastics too. So these two frosted ones are not they're not Bakelite or phenolic resin. Technically, none of it's Bakelite because it's Marblette. But this one here, this hot pinky turning orange color, this one is a phenolic resin and will test positive. But I love this stack. I will not take it apart. I love the little tag. This is for me to collect. I just, I love that. And this one is fun. It is cream spinach and this cream corn, cream spinach. Um, I will show you guys the creamed corn too. 
because I have some of that as well. This is cream spinach and it is a memory wire bracelet with a fun, some fun beads. And I don't love memory wire bracelets. I feel like they fit me weird. Um, but I do really like this bracelet. I guess it looks fine like that. I don't know. I feel like, cause I, I think I have, I have small wrists, but like a weird wrist bone. I don't know. I'm probably making that up. It's probably not a real thing. Oh, and I have one other one. I have one other of the, to me, this kind of looks ambery. Um, I did have a family photo done and I wore colors like this and I wore this bangle and I love it because it's super fall. Like a lot of the um, Bakelite, they turn to fall colors and they look really cool. This one is also handcrafted marblette, but this one is not a phenolic resin. I think this might just be like a lucite plastic or even a different kind of plastic because there are others. And because Bakelite will um, oxidize and won't, it won't stay white like this, like this ivory color. But I love this, you know, the little tag and everything. So this is in my collection as well. I have three necklaces. So this is called a lozenge necklace. And you can see the carvings, it's really cool. And this is like, again, faux ambery color, tortoiseshell type color. And one thing that I have noticed about Bakelite is if it's true vintage Bakelite, any fastenings are going to be inside of the Bakelite. So you won't see things that are glued on. Um, everything will be like inside of the plastic embedded into it. So it's pretty cool. I love this. I found this one out in the wild. I was pretty excited about that. This one I also found out in the wild. And it is quite long, as you can tell. And has little bake light -like cubes on it. And I just, I love it. I think it's so neat. I love these little cubes. And I, it's just a really fun, fun necklace. This one, I stole back from my husband. <laughs> Any guesses as to why he wanted this one? <laughs> it's a really fun, it's got a box clasp. Uh, and it's got the f initials on the back. A little kitty inside on some weird cotton thing but this medallion is a red red bake light and i love this it's so cool he will probably try to steal it back from me and i will probably try to steal i will successfully steal it back from him or else he won't be getting cat pins from me you guys all send him cat pins <laughs> But I do not, I, I don't have to. So these I found uh, like a day before I found the necklace. And they're little lozenge earrings. And they're super cool. So these ones don't have anything embedded, but um, there's a little hole. So they could have been something else and then made into these. But I love them anyway. And they go really well with either necklace actually. I have these earrings. I was really happy about these because I love the color so much. These are also embedded into the plastic and they're pierced, which is really a great thing because clips aren't always comfortable. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, but I love these. Pretty red color. These are, um, I believe, the Mississippi mud color, and they're hoops, and they're also pierced, and it's also in, in the plastic. 
So these are great. I love the heft of them. And then I got two that are pretty similar, but they're, they're different. And I don't think I got any of these earrings as big light earrings either. I, I've just found them. And there are these ones. These are clippies. The clippies are embedded in the plastic. And these ones I like better because they're a little, little more um, cream spinach-y. And these ones are a little bit more green. But same thing. And the shape's different too. Here, I'll show you guys. Well, no. They're pretty spot on. <laughs> so... But the colors are quite different. Brooches. We'll go with brooches now. So we have this one, and this is what they call creamed corn. So it's this yellowy color. But you can see this is embedded into the plastic. And I did test this. This did test positive for Bakelite. This guy I got um, on vacation with my husband. I love it. It's a little lager, and there's there's a lot of variations on these. They're super fun. I just I've worn him a couple times. I think he's great, and that's what the back of him looks like. I didn't even test this one for big like because I just I know it is. I will show you guys some utensils that I have that are pretty much exactly the same. And honestly, I can't remember if this is amber or Bakelite. So this one here, I found early, early on in my collecting and, and researching and learning about vintage jewelry, jewelry. And I thought for sure this is Bakelite. Like everything is embedded into the plastic. The colors look right but none of the tests passed. And once I did more research and I got some information on some Facebook groups, this is actually Russian Amber. So very beautiful. I love it still. And the price is actually pretty similar if, if this was Bakelite or if this was the Russian Amber anyhow. So it's really great. It's got the little C clasp and I love that. So I can't remember if this was amber or bakelite, I think it might be maybe the, the Russian amber. But I will show you one that I know is bakelite. Is this one? This one was $29.99. So I'll show you guys kind of the difference. This one's bakelite, this one's Russian amber. So well, you can see kind of the biggest difference is on the back. And so, you know, a lot of the Bakelite was meant to mimic natural materials. So you can kind of see where they, they look very similar because I, I do think that this one is Russian Amber and this one is Bakelite. So they look pretty similar. These backgammon pieces are also, these are um, Bakelite. So you have this fiery reddish color and then the creamed corn. So I was thinking about making something with these, some kind of jewelry, I'm not sure. They're pretty thick and heavy. Bakelite is always heavier than other plastics. Lucite's pretty heavy and that that's, we'll get into that when I do a Lucite video, but um, you know, good quality Lucite plastic is heavy too, but the Bakelite's usually heavier. So I also have some Bakelite utensils. And I have um, a whole set of knives upstairs that look like this. Did not bring them down, I apologize. And there's a lot of barware that was made with Bakelite handles. And the stir. And a shoehorn. And this one has a little seahorse carving set. And again, see, so this is why I didn't have to test. It looks very much alike. This isn't very sharp, so don't worry, I'm not gonna cut my hair. 
hair had a, a cheese cutter. And my personal favorite, because I like so vintage sewing materials, this guy. And I like the color of it and the color of the metal. I also have, speaking of vintage um, sewing materials, there are some buttons that I got. And I'm going to try, I think, to make a necklace out of this somehow or, or you know, brooch or something because these are very similar color and size and I just think they're really cool and this one's really beautifully carved. All right, I did forget one. I saw this in a um, photo and I had to go get it. And I did pay for it. I paid up for it. I don't remember how much, maybe around $50. But they, they can sell for more online. So the Mahjong tiles are all Bakelite. There's nothing on the inside of them. I don't believe that these black ones are. I think it's just the Mahjong tiles. I think these were Bakelite and uh, then they were made into bracelets later. And it's got the, the black stretchy material as well. It's very smooth and soft and the stretch is still there. It's a really super fun bracelet and I had to have one of these if I could find it for a reasonable price in my collection. So testing. So if you clink together two non um, bake light bangles, they'll make, yeah, th these are better. They'll make like a clinky sound, high pitch clinky sound. And then if you do two big light ones, it's more of a clud. So even the smaller ones do the same thing. So that is one way a lot of people can hear the difference. I have a hard time with it. That would definitely not be one of my only tests to conclude if something was Bakelite or not. The other one is visual. Again, make sure you know what colors they would come in. Make sure you know kind of what they look like because you don't want to spend your time testing and buying things that um, aren't even in a color that could possibly be Bakelite or Phenolic Resin or Crystal or Catalan, which Catalan, I don't believe I own any. It is, I believe, French. It's pretty cool. You can research that um, yourself if you want to. I don't have a lot of information on it because I don't have any pieces, but I would love to. So that is the first two tests, I would say. Visual, like know what colors they are. Look at them. The orange peel, I have noticed, helps for me. And the colors really help to know what colors they come in. The other one is with something called semi-chrome polish. This can polish silver too, so it is double duty and you only need a little bit to polish silver and you only need a little bit to test Bakelite. This is corrosive, so you do want to make sure you wash any off of your bangles or Bakelite, whatever you um, are testing this with. Don't leave it on there. Especially if you're putting it on the amber or something like that, you definitely don't want to leave this on anything. It is it is corrosive and it it's not something you just want to put on everything. So I will bring you guys down for the testing. However, I want to show you guys some that were positively tested. So and this is after like an hour. So you'll get this like yellowy tobacco-y color is the best way I can describe it. And these are different bangles that were tested positively. Oops. And they all come up with the same color and some were green, some were orange, some were 
yellow, brown, and they all pretty much, if they test positive, they come up with the, the same color. So I will bring you guys down for the semi-chrome test to show you up close and personal, and I will be back with you soon. So I have my semi-chrome polish and I have a Q-tip here. And what I suspect is a Bakelite bangle. So I'm not gonna show you guys obviously the hot, the hot water test either, but we will discuss it after this one. So I just put a little tiny dot on here and try to do it in an inc inconspicuous spot. I'm gonna do on the top of this one. And that's what a positive result will look like. You don't need a lot. A little, little dab will do ya. And that is what you are looking for, a yellowy, tobacco-y color. If you want to test another one, don't use this uh, side because you can get uh, false positive result results. I would always flip over to the next one and test your next one. Hot water test is the um, other one that you can do. So obviously you can't smell through... <laughs> video so what you would do you just put an area underneath the hot water hot tap water not boiling water and I put it under for 30 seconds and um, 20 seconds any more and you're usually not really going to get it's it's not gonna smell after the 20 seconds normally. If you have black, you can add it a little bit longer because black is kind of notoriously harder to test. 20 seconds should do ya. Any less, and sometimes you won't you won't get the smell. Um, sometimes if something's older, I've noticed you get it like right away. I put it in for 20 seconds, and then you would smell it. It should smell like formaldehyde, and and. It's kind of like like the sensation of the the Vicks, Vicks Vapo rub in the in the way that like the vapors will come into your nose and you would smell it. In my opinion, again, th this is all conjecture. It's from me, but it will come into your nose. Uh, should smell kind of like formaldehyde. It's not an extremely unpleasant smell or pleasant smell. Um, for me, it also smells like if you've ever opened an old sewing sewing storage kit, that smells kind of like fake light. Or some older jewelry boxes will have that smell as well. And that, that's probably old bake light buttons or bake light um, jewelry that was stored in there that, that gave it that scent. So... Um, that is the third test, and that is the one that um, a lot of people swear by. I swear by that one. I don't always um, use the semi-chrome because it's caustic, so you know it's it can it can damage things. So you you kind of want to use it sparingly. And once you kind of start realizing what things look like, what things feel like, what colors you're looking for and what Bakelite looks like, and you look at a bunch of examples, the need to, to, to test fully um, kind of will be less if you're using it for your collection. A lot of times if somebody is selling it, you will see that this has been tested and you'll see the Q-tip there with the item, which is something that you can do as well if, you, if you're going to sell your Bakelite items. All right, I'm going to bring you back up, and we'll be ending the video. And we're back. Uh, so that was my Bakelite collection, or phenolic resin collection, whatever you want to call it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it and sharing my collection with you guys. I hope it grows in the future, because I don't think you can ever have enough Bakelite. 
<laughs> in your life. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment below. Please share this video with anyone that you think um, could benefit from this information. And if you haven't and you want to, please subscribe. I love vintage and jewelry and I do a lot of jewelry jar videos, jewelry bag videos, and hauls, flea marketing um, when it's warm, <laughs> not snowing outside. Same thing with um, going to yard sales. I do go live sometimes, so if you want to catch me live, please hit that notification bell, and otherwise I will see you guys in my next video. Bye so guys! I thought I would give you guys a little bit more of a close-up of the collection. At the end here, this little kitty. Jimmy did try to steal him back yesterday. And the lozenge piece. My little angry logger. Kind of looks like a doggy. I don't know why. And my earrings. The memory wire bracelet, Mahjong bracelet, and the really cool old Art Deco -y, um, stretch bracelet. And this is what I'm going to be using to collect my bangles in. I kind of like the way that it looks. And the bangles you can kind of leave out. I don't get a lot of sunlight in my bedroom anyway. Here's a close up of this carved of angle and then this one and this was the marblette and that one hand carved marblette so cool I love that one all right and the the faceted Art Deco type bangles as well. So I thought I would bring you guys in for a bit of a close up as well before I ended the video. Hello! Oops. <laughs> Here's a crazy mess. Okay. This is. Uh, And oh. <laughs> editing this video is going to be wonderfully difficult.